So based on earlier feedback to produce more UX content, this is technically a UX content. So this one goes out to Cindy Shonton. I'll put your handle and comment down below. Um, yeah, welcome to today's video. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, like, share, and drop a comment so we can keep the conversation going. I always say that. But yes, I like to keep the conversation going in the comment section. Um, yeah, so let's get right into it. Like zero degrees, I'm out the cage, gotta let out the beast. Revolutionary guy, let out the streets. Locked in the cage, I'ma let out the hood, out the hood, out the hood. Wake up, get out. So first things first, you don't need to learn how to code to switch to an IT career. There's a lot of misconception that oh, you need to know how to write code, you need to go to school again before you can switch to an IT career. No, you don't have to do that. You have to of course do your research and learn about the career that you want to switch to. It doesn't have to be in the school. There are tons of resources online these days that you can use to, you know, learn about the your career switch, um, know what goes on in the career, know what to do, and then make your switch. So for me, I, I have a background in engineering. My bachelor's degree was in computer engineering, and then immediately after school, I got a job in an interior design company. Interesting. And I worked there for three years. I was basically a creative designer and a project manager. So I would do AutoCAD designs, do a bit of Photoshop graphics. As you can see, there's already like a background of design coming up. I would do AutoCAD, I would do 3D designs, you know, um, architectural visualizations, all of those. Um, and the project management, because after a job is approved, you would have to uh, manage that project from beginning to the end, see through to the beginning. Surprisingly, as you later see, you realize that interior design is sort of similar to UX um, design in the sense that you would have to collect user requirements. In this sense, you collect your client's requirements, collect the client brief, right? Um, you would work on it, you would do a bit of research, um, you would discuss with the fellow designers. In the case of UX, you would discuss with developers, come up with a design, show it to the Clients in interior design, in UX, you would do user feedback sessions, you know, show them your prototype, and then when everything is good to go in interior design, you would then manufacture the pieces. In UX design, you would then develop the design. So, similar, not so different um, backgrounds. So, this is just my story, of course. And then, so I did that for three years, and I went to do my master's. I did my master's in animation. I wanted to be a 3D artist back in the day. So I did the whole one year master's, um, finished, um, I had a showreel, good to go, and I started looking for a job in animation. I, so I didn't get back in my own country, and um, so I continued in interior design because of course I had previous experience in that. I um, continued doing interior design, then a couple of years later, I relocated to Canada. And moving to Canada, I landed in Calgary and started looking for a 3D artist job. So I did that for a couple of months, months ran into years, and then I landed a contract gig, which was a design contract gig, too, and it was with um, a big school year in Calgary. So after that, it was contract, of course, so every contract must come to an end contract was not renewed so I was at home for a while and then the thought came to me and you already have an engineering background you can design stuff why not just merge both of them together I couldn't develop mind you I, I don't write code I try but I'm not a seasoned you know, programmer so why not just so I figured why not just um, merge both of them and do UI design so I started um, Packaging my portfolio, my UI design portfolio now, I would think of um, problems or ways that I could improve an app or my own just random app ideas and design them. And because there wasn't development involved, it was easy for me to just come up with a bunch of design, go to Adobe XD and uh, flesh out something or Figma and flesh out something and then just create my own portfolio website and put it out there and start applying for jobs. And then, of course, even when you switch career, or even if you're a seasoned UI designer, it's not the first, it's not the first job application you send out that would come true. Well, maybe for 
son. <laughs> it came to like that. But for me, it took about three, four months of interviews, mind you. So this is after sending a ton of resumes out, applying for lots of jobs. And then one of them interviewed me. So luckily for me, it was an interior construction company, which just merged my experience from interior design and then the old technology and UI thing. It was a perfect mix. And that was it. I landed the job. So I'll just provide some points, some pointers and tools I used during my job search and um, you know just to help the person out there thinking of switching to an IT career. And if you are switching to an IT career because of the money, it is absolutely all right. Yes, go follow the money. If you want to get a sense of what IT pays, you can use a website called Payscale, payscale.com. So you can search for a job title and they'll give you an idea of how much that job pays per annum. If you want to get a sense of the availability of a job, you can use Indeed. Indeed is quite popular, indeed.com. So that one, you can just search a job title and just, just, just see what pops up. So that lets you know if the IT career choice, that particular line of IT that you decided to go into, if, it's, if there's a lot of jobs out there or not. And if you like a company and you want to look at their reviews and see what they're all about, you can use Glassdoor for that. That's Glassdoor.com. So go to Glassdoor, put in the company name, and you are able to read their reviews sent in by from my employees. You can also have a look at their interview process and you know have an idea of whether you still want to work there or not. So a few points about switching to IT. First of all, it's not as scary as it, as it seems. If you have a bachelor's degree, I mean, you are smart enough to switch to IT. It doesn't matter what your bachelor's degree was. As long as you went through those years of training, that means you can easily jump or something else and learn it. I mean, the interesting thing about IT is that um, there's always a tool that you can use. So you're not just going to do everything manually. If you're a software tester, there's there is something you will use to test the software. If you, for me as a UX designer, I use design tools, so you can just learn those tools and you are good. If you are a business analyst, there will be software that you can learn how to use. So there's always a tool. You're not just going in blind or you are not, you are not manually actually doing anything. You just have to learn the tool involved and you're good. And then secondly, whatever company you eventually land a, a role with, they are going to train you. So don't stress yourself. Learn the job learn what it involves, get into the company, you're going to get trained because of course even if you know everything, the way they do things in that company is going to be different from wherever you're coming from. So you, um, they will train you, they will show you what goes where and how they run things in-house. And then thirdly is the big question, do you need to go back to school? Personally, I would say no because I didn't go back to school. And if you happen to be in Canada or in Calgary or in a country where they have a public library, specifically in Calgary, Canada, if you register for the public library, if you're a member of the public library, which is free of charge, you have access to um, Linda, which is now Lingy Learning, I guess. So you have access to Linda modules free of charge. So that's something you can use, which is what I did. I signed up with the library, I'm a library member, I have a library card, and with the library card, I'll try and put a link below of the LinkedIn learning part of the library so that you can use your library card to log into it because it's a different link for regular LinkedIn learning and the library access. So just use that. If you so I understand that there are some people that only that can only learn when they are in a group setting, like when they are with people and they are seeing the instructor and all of that, which is fine. If you're that kind of person, by all means go to school. Go and go for a short course and um, learn the ropes. But if you're someone that can sit down on your own and and learn, then just use the available resources. There are tons of materials here on YouTube, it's on LinkedIn, on Coursera, you know, any of those type of platforms. So you can use that to learn and then um, fix up your resume, work on some. If you can get an internship, that's also perfect. So get an internship. And in the beginning, you may not really worry about the pay because you need the experience more than the pay, really. So just jump in there, try and get your hands dirty. Um, do jobs, create your own personal portfolio. Oh yeah, and if you're going into a design-related career, for example, UX design, you definitely need to have a portfolio. Because UX is show and tell. You tell the interview, you speak English, blah, 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 but they want to see what you've done. They want to see if the portfolio of your, 
of your designs is something similar to what they do in house. So you, you need to have a portfolio. So and, and of course you can use websites like Wix, like Squarespace. This is not a sponsored video by the way. I'm just name dropping. So you can use Wix or Squarespace or any of those other CMS platforms to design your own website. So put out your work out there, put in your resume, you know, my portfolio is this, you are good to go. The next thing is start reaching out to the recruiters, update your LinkedIn. If you are not on LinkedIn, I really don't know if you are really looking for a job, but um, get on LinkedIn, um, update your profile, put yourself open to recruiter so that they can find you because the way LinkedIn works is kind of like the way Google works. The, the recruiter search for a role and then you rank. So depending on how you rank, they can find you and, and email you or message you on LinkedIn and then get the conversation going from there. So that's it. That's, that's the story of how I switched from being an interior designer to a US designer, which isn't so far off when you look at it, but I had to you know, learn a bit of what UX is about, and it was all free. I did not go to the school for that, put out a portfolio, and I eventually switched to IT. So if I can do it from material design to deck, definitely you can do it. So this was just a short video to tell my own story of how I moved from being an interior designer to eventually being a UX designer. And I've been doing that for over a year now, so it's not really a big deal to be honest. So, major point is you don't need to learn how to code. Depending on what part of IT that you are going into, it may not have anything to do with code. So, coding, except you really want to code, then of course, you need something to develop. Um, you don't need to go to a school. You can use free resources online, unless, of course, you are the kind of person that needs to be in, a, in an environment with other students, which is completely fine. Sometimes you don't want the distraction, you just want to be where it's strictly for learning. So, go to a school where you you have people that you can you know, discuss ideas with, you have group assignments and all of that, that's perfectly fine also. But if you can learn on your own, then just use the resources available to you. YouTube has tons of tutorials, tons of people like this, whatever I'm talking about being a UX designer. So there are tons of resources out there that you can search on YouTube how to be this, how to be a software developer, how to be a business analyst, how to be whatever. IT career that you want to do or a day in the life of those are things that I would search for to get an idea of what the role is about and then the company will train you unless of course you are working for a one-man company and they just want somebody to hit the ground running personally I would avoid that and go for you know bigger companies so they will train you they, are, they usually have like an induction period I'm sure wherever you are you are working now they train you so the same thing with IT they would have an induction period where they will teach you the processes, let you understand how things work in house, you know, learn the ropes before they won't just throw you into the deep end. Do you need to go back to school? No. I think I mentioned that before. Personally I didn't go to school, but if you want to that's fine. But you don't have to. And finally, if your IT career that you're interested in is design related like me, UX design or software or website design, you know, then you need to have a portfolio. A developer, you need to have like a repository of your code. A lot of people use GitHub, so I mean, if you code, then show us the kind of code that you've written. So use GitHub and you share that link in your portfolio. So thank you guys for watching. If you like this video or if you want to see more of this, or if you have any suggestions, if I missed anything, please leave it in the comment section below. We can get, we can get a conversation going there. I will reply the comment, all of the comments, really. Um, please subscribe like the video, share with anyone that is um, considering that switch to IT. Because IT is big now, so IT is not going anywhere, it's only keep getting bigger. So come on, come on board, there's a lot of space for everybody. If you have someone that's considering it and isn't sure, please share this video with them. Let's all you know, encourage one another and you know, let's get it. Follow the money. Thanks guys, see you in the next video. Peace. Revolutionary guy let out the streets, locked in a cage, I'ma let out the hood.